in this video, we're going to talk about how to find the sine or cosine of an angle, which is either the sum or the difference of two angles. So to start off, we're just going to learn some formulas. And we'll actually talk about the proof of these in class at some point. So the first set, I have the cosine of a minus b. That's going to be the cosine of a times the cosine of b plus the sine of a times the sine of b. Notice you didn't just distribute the cosine. It's cosine of a minus b is not the cosine of a minus the cosine of b. It doesn't distribute. All right. And then when we change that to have the sum of an angle, we're going to keep everything the same with the one exception. So we still have the cos of a times the cos of b. And then we're going to change the sign to be subtraction minus the sine of a times the sine of b. And a way that uh, most of us have learned to memorize this formula is that when you're finding the cos of either the sum or the difference, it goes cos, cos, op, sine, sine. So where we're getting that from is cos, cos, opposite sine of what's in here, sine, sine. And again, cos, cos, opposite of what's in here, sine, sine. And we also have something to memorize the signs as well. This formula for the sine of the difference of a and b is going to be sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. And then the same thing for this, we're just going to switch that sign. We're going to have sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Okay, And here's how we're going to remember this one. Sine cos same cos sine. And I know that sounds kind of weird, like, well, I don't know if that's really like a trick to help memorize, but it kind of rolls off your tongue, all right? I'm going to write these down again. So we have, for this set, cos cos op sine sine. And for this set here, sine cos same cos sine. And again, that's just to help you memorize. So now let's try using these. So, hmm, what does this have to do with what we just learned? This is sine of an angle. Ah, but notice that angle, 7 pi over 12, isn't something that we're used to dealing with. We're used to dealing with things like pi over 2, pi over 3, pi over 4, pi over 6. So let's see, could we maybe break down 7 pi over 12 into either the sum or the difference of the angles that we know? Okay, let's give this a try. Um, so 7 pi over 12. Let's break that up into, let's do the sine of 3 pi over 12. And why did I choose that? Well, 3 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 4. Wonderful, I know how to work with that. And then we're going to add 4 pi over 12, so we get our total of 7 pi. And 4 pi over 12 is going to reduce to pi over 3, another angle I know how to work with. So this is perfect. So now I have to go back and remember my formula here. Um, for sine, it's sine cos, same cosine. So let's do that. Sine, first angle. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to write 3 pi over 12. I'm going to simplify that. That's going to be pi over 4. Okay. Cos, the other angle, pi over 3. So, so far we have the sine, cos, same. Go with the plus sign. Cos, first angle. Sine, second angle. And you will start to memorize that with 
practice. It doesn't work if you don't keep doing lots of problems, okay? So now let's see if we can do this. Um, sine of pi over 4, that's going to be uh, root 2 over 2. Have that memorized. Cosine of pi over 3, that's going to be 1 half. Again, that's memorized. Um, cosine of pi over 4 is the same thing as pi over 4. Root 2 over 2. And sine of pi over 3, that is root 3 over 2. Okay, so let's just simplify this. We get root 2 over 4 plus root 6 over 4. So our total is root 2 plus root 6 over 4. So that is what the sine of 7 pi over 12 is without a calculator. That is a very convenient formula to have. So let's just practice maybe going backwards a little bit. What if you saw this? We have sine cos. Ooh, remember this goes same cos sine. Sine cos, same cosine is for sine of two angles that are being added. Well, what are those two angles? 12 degrees and 18 degrees. That's the same thing as the sine of 30 degrees. Well, perfect. Sine of 30 degrees is one half, and I am done. So I never had to find the sine of 12 degrees or cosine of 18 degrees separately. Right? Now that doesn't always work. You're not always going to find, you know, numbers that are going to add or subtract to angles that you actually know the sine or, of or cosine of. But in this case, we did. And here's another example. So we've worked with sinusoids before. You know, I think we found that if we um, square the a values of the cosine and a function and the sine function, we add them together, we take the square root, we're going to find the new amplitude of the function, right? That's still going to work, All right? But notice that I want to write this in the form a sine of bx plus c, all right? not something we're used to doing. We're used to seeing that b being factored out of both of these values here and then a plus c at the end. So I'm going to just show you another way of thinking about this um, where we um, are actually going to use the sine of two angles being added together. Okay. So I'm going to take this form right here and I'm going to break it up. So I know that that's going to be A times a whole lot of stuff, because we're going to do the sine of BX, cos of C, plus the cos of BX times the sine of C. And then don't forget your plus D at the end. All right? So that's another way of writing that. Well, let's distribute the A here. A sine BX cos C plus A cos BX sine C plus D. Okay. So now, we have to think about well, how are these supposed to match up? How is 2 cos 3x plus 4 sine 3x supposed to equal that long thing? Well, let's see if we can start matching up some pieces. Notice this plus d. That doesn't seem to show up on the left side here. It's, it's here, but I don't see anything here. I'm going to say that the D is zero in this case. Okay, so let's not worry about the D. Um, which piece matches up to which piece here? Well, this has a cos of something with an x. This has cos with something x. Okay, so I'm going to say that this piece and this piece match up. 
And then let me get another color here. Um, this is sine of something with an X, and this is sine of something with an X. So I'm going to say that those pieces match up. Okay, 2 cos 3x, that's going to match up with a cos bx sine c. Okay, the cos 3x matches up with the cos bx. That means that the, another color coming here, that the 2 matches up with all of the remaining stuff. Okay, and notice the B must be 3, right? That's the only way that's going to work. Okay, so I'm going to say that 2 equals A sine of C. Okay, now let's go back to the other side, uh, the green parts that matched up. 4 sine of 3x, that equals the A sine bx cos c, and the sine 3x matches up with the sine bx, and it's a good thing because b can't be two different numbers in this problem, right? b must be 3, so the 4 must match up with the a cos c, so 4 equals a cos c. Alright, this is looking nice because now I have two equations with two variables. I have a nice system I could solve here. So let's set this up. Um, I guess I could do substitution. I think I'd rather just divide these equations because then the a's would disappear. That's easy. So I'm going to divide this side by the 4 equals a cos c. Alright, so when we do that, the a's cancel we get 1 half equals sine c over cos c. Well, that's tan of c. That means that tan inverse of 1 half is what c is. Okay, that's good news. So we have now found c. I already mentioned that b must be 3. D must be 0. Okay, so the only thing that I need to do now is A. Now you already do know how to find A, I already mentioned that. Let's just confirm that A is what we think it is using our little system here. So let me just insert a page. So we found C, so I'm going to plug that in here. So we're doing the cos of tan inverse of 1 half. All right, and we're going to solve for a. All right, so the cos of tan inverse of 1 half, let's do the tan inverse. When we're doing tan inverse, we're only looking in the first and fourth quadrants. Here, everything is positive. Here, only cosine is positive, so we must be in the first quadrant. Okay, Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so this must be 1. This must be 2. That's going to make our hypotenuse root 5. Just using Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so now we've used the tan inverse to set up our picture. Now I'm really looking at 4 equals a times the cosine of whatever that angle is. We'll call it theta, right? So what's the cosine of that angle? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And now let's solve for A. A is going to be 4 root 5 over 2, which is really 2 root 5. Okay, so now think about what the individual A values of the sine and cosine functions were in the beginning problem. They were 4 and 2. And we said, okay, you would square each of those values, um, add them together, and square root. That would be root 20. Well, that's the same thing as 2 root 5, right? So we could have also gotten the answer that way. Nothing wrong with that. 
So in the end, we have y equals 2 root 5 for our a value, sine of b, which was 3, the x, plus c, I'm just going to write tan inverse of 1 half right there, okay, plus d, which was 0. And that's our final answer. Good luck trying some of these on your own.